Don, your degree is in computational psychology from MIT? That's correct. So I really am interested in the computational theory of mind, which is one kind of, of um, school of thought about how we can understand the mind uh, and how it works. Yes. What do you think? The computational theory of mind says that we can understand human intelligence, the human mind more generally, as like a computer. There are operations on representations. There are coding states and transformations of these states. And so um, in, in cognitive science and in, in computational theories of mind, what we actually do when we try to explain human intelligence, uh, say, uh, language learning ability or some kind of visual perception ability, we actually write a program. And our, so our computational theory of mind is actually a piece of you know, C code or something like that. And you know, part of the way we tell whether the theory is good or not is does the C code actually work and does it give us results that are similar to human behavior given the same input. So we can, we can show if it's a computer vision system that's doing color perception, we can give the video inputs to the computer system that we'd give to human subjects and see if we get the same kind of responses. Mm -hmm. So it can be very useful for um, intelligence, for the um, behavioral aspects of perception, um, language learning and so forth. So it's great for all of that I, and I'm, I'm fine with that. What it can't do is make the jump to consciousness. So the computational theory of mind, no one has been able to jump from that, myself included, to uh, give it to without miracles, <laughs> to give us a theory of consciousness or to show how con consciousness could emerge. There are two ways they've tried to do it. One is called re reductive functionalism, where you say that um, consciousness just is a particular computational function. It could be a very complicated one, but it's just the same thing as. And it, 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 we can talk about that, but I'll, I'll just say that it, it fails. And, and perhaps not too many people believe that approach right now. But there's more to, to say about that. But the other one is non-reductive functionalism, which says um, co computer models aren't the same thing as consciousness, but somehow the functional properties of these computer models can give rise to consciousness. If we got a computer that was programmed well enough, cleverly enough, it actually might have the first twinges of consciousness. And in fact, if we knew how to reverse engineer the brain and understand the computer code of the brain, so to speak, we could then download that code into a computer and some researchers suggest that then we, you would be immortal. We would have downloaded your, your whole mind computationally into the computer and as long as someone doesn't unplug the computer you'll you'll live forever so that, that's their version of eternal life and and do you think that is in principle possible i think that we might be able to reverse engineer the neural circuits of the brain and get their functional correlates well modeled in a computer and download that and get something that um is dis indistinguishable in this behavior from a human being the question then is, even though we've, we've in some sense downloaded your mind in that sense into the computer successfully so that even perhaps uh, your best friends wouldn't know from your behaviors that it wasn't you, there's still the open question, has your consciousness itself been downloaded? Now, now if you believe in the functional theory of mind, you would say, well, I've, I've asked the wrong question. If you've got the functional thing, you've got the consciousness in there. But I'm questioning that. No one has actually shown how the functional properties of a system can give rise to consciousness. Um, again, we're in a situation where it's not that we don't have any theories. We don't have any remotely plausible ideas. There, there, it's, it's, there's nothing to say intelligently there. The other approach then is to say, well, then the mind and consciousness is identical to the functional properties. And from my point of view, that's just punting. That's, that's giving up because the problem is too hard. Well, and it also is uh, the classic identity theory that it, it, it just seems incredible that something that has a first person inner feel is something else, whether it's the functional equivalent of, of a computer's output or whether it's uh, nerve fibers firing in a different model. That's right. uh, to say that they are the same thing uh, is, a, is a, 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 it seems like a misunderstanding of what of what it is to have a first-person experience of consciousness. It, it, it seems to me as well, but in the field, it's taken quite the opposite. 
in, in, the, you know, in cognitive neuroscience and philosophers of mind and so forth, one of the mantras is that the mind is what the brain does. And that's well, shorthand. That's the premise. That's the, that's, the, that's the premise. And that's really a shorthand for this kind of computational theory of mind, right? It's saying that if you really understand what the brain is doing, that it's, there's some kind of program, there's some kind of function. And the mind is that function. And your consciousness also is that function. Now, it turns out that that's been debated for quite a while. I mean, I actually decided to make that a rigorous question. So in, I think, 2006, 2007, I actually formalized the question, is reductive functionalism um, possible or not? I formalized it and I published in the journal Consciousness and Cognition a formal disproof. So I've actually proven that um, consciousness cannot be identified with any functional properties of any system. The, the proof is completely general, so it's not just of the brain, of any computational system. So what you're saying then is the computational theory of mind can work for what we call the e easy problems That's in right. terms of things that the brain and mind does, That's right. but, but is impotent for what the mind and consciousness is. Absolutely. It's, it's, and by the way, I've done a lot of work in the computational theory of mind. It works wonderfully for the basic easy problems. But for consciousness, it's a non-starter.